Okay, Dennis, let's start with the last one, design. Your Australian Standard 3725 basically talks about two types of culvert installation. That's uh, trench installation and embankment installation. From an architect's point of view, you, I mean, you, it's an imperfect process sometimes design. I mean, you design for X and, and Y ends up on site. Exactly. Uh, it's not uncommon, despite all our modern computer-aided design techniques, to find that when you get out in site, the, the level of the culverts as it's set out is, you know, a couple hundred mils below the natural surface or maybe a couple hundred mils above the natural surface. Yeah, and, and that'll require redesign. Yeah, but either a redesign at the culvert inlet or outlet level, uh, which may affect the hydraulic efficiency of the pipe, or a regrading of the natural surface at the outlet or the inlet, um, and that may have some in, in, environmental consequences. Mm. It has been known for drainage channels at the outlet of culverts to have sufficient grade only as far as the road reserve boundary and then to have adverse grade thereafter. And this is the result of poor design or inadequate survey. And this is even with modern computer-aided design? Absolutely. Another problem that often occurs, particularly on urban projects, is that we find clashes between underground services, either planned or existing, mm. and the stormwater pipes or pits. So then it's a good idea to get the surveyors to mark out any new plan utilities and to pothole any existing utilities so any clashes can be noted. Yeah, I think it's an absolute must and any clashes can then be dealt with by a redesign of the utility level or location or maybe the stormwater level or location. What if we're extending an existing culvert? Now I understand this is quite common in urban projects when you're, when you're widening a road or widening an embankment you have to look at extending the existing culverts. When the culvert has been extended in a straight line then the existing headwall or at least the wing walls needs to be removed or demolished. So we can get a clean join from the new extension to the existing culvert. That's right, the end of the existing pipe should then be exposed for about 500 millimetres and neatly cut square. And the end of the new pipe sh section should then be butted up against the neatly sawn end of the old pipe and supported in place while a properly constructed concrete collar. Another option is to slot a uh, section of larger pipe over the join and grout up the annulus between the two pipes. So it's not just as simple as cutting the old pipe and slotting the new socket over it because the new socket might necessarily fit the old pipe. That's right, then about 500 millimetres of the in-situ backfill around the joint should be removed and replaced with a stabilised sand mix. To really lock it in there, I think I've got you. Now that's for, for a straight pipe extension, but what if the new extension heads off at a different angle? Well, if the extended pipe makes a bend at the joint, then what we need is a properly designed junction pit at the joint and ideally the junction pit should extend to the surface, to the natural surface, because we don't uh, particularly like to see buried pits.